Hi there, friends. Welcome to my No BS Gear Review channel. As you know, my channel's foundation is a search for truth and uh, expressing opposing opinions to the larger sort of communal echo chamber, no matter how unpopular those opinions may be. So I'm uh, getting ready to circle back to a knife that created a little bit of a ripple in my previous videos and set a couple records straight, hopefully. Thanks for watching. Let's get into it. Pretty recently, in March 2025, I reviewed Neve Knives Offender. Now, the reason I marked CBR on the blade is uh, because a viewer of mine, a subscriber, sent me his Neve Offender to validate my findings about a couple different things that rose some eyebrows, to say the least. So I'm looking at this knife. Uh, it's a near identical twin to mine. It functions as beautifully and smoothly as the one I got, which makes me very happy. Perhaps mine um, suffers a little bit from the bearing damage that uh, they sustained during my extreme torture tests. Uh, you have to watch the video to find out what I did. There are some differences. What I'm pointing out here is that the swedge grind is uh, slightly different between the two knives. The one that uh, I got from the viewer has the swedge moved back toward the handle a little bit, whereas mine uh, is a little bit more forward and comes to a fine point right there at the tip where his terminates well, about, I'm going to say an eighth of an inch prior to reaching the tip. I personally like mine better because deep down I believe uh, bringing these lines to the tip makes the strength of a tip higher. But I could be wrong about that. Other than that, there are literally no observable differences, at least at the first glance. So let's stick uh, this uh, newcomer under the microscope and explore the quality of the edge. And as you can see, the tip is absolutely perfect. This is the right side of the blade. The secondary tip where the two grinds meet, it's a little bit less crisp that I found on my knife, but nothing major uh, to report there. The grind width stays consistent. And um, on the left side, it comes to a fine tip, although it's not quite as crisp on, as on the right side. Just a hair imperfection, you could only see it under the microscope. Uh, here's a look at mine, a little dirty here. I've been using this knife, I carried it for a week. Uh, no negative things to report. And it's the first time uh, that I'm looking at it under the microscope since I started carrying it. And here I'm noticing there's some kind of scratch on the secondary bevel there. I don't know where I earned it. And if, like me, you are noticing a little bit of what looks like chipping at the apex, this is not chipping. I think mine was slightly understropped and some of the sharpening burr was left on the apex. And now it's coming off. You can see actually it kind of wire pulling off of my blade now that I'm using it on a regular basis. So um, to that effect, let's look at the um, viewer's knife again. And here you can see a much more pronounced convexity right at the apex, meaning his was stropped better than mine. Now let's take a quick look at um, sharpening choil area. This is focus of Jared's, and rightfully so. And um, I would say that uh, this knife looks uh, just fine in that area. So next, uh, I am going to measure the blade deployment force because that experiment surprised Jared, judging by the comment he left in that video. Jared, what I was trying to convey here, uh, I discovered through measurement and trial and error that um, the ideal deployment force needs to be at least 1.2 pounds of force, which this knife completely assures, no matter where I am uh, placing the probe here and I'm placing it uh, toward the front or toward the sort of, toward the back of the slot for middle finger deployment and toward the middle <coughs> where my thumb naturally ends up. 
And in both cases, I'm getting 1.2 or higher. Higher is better for crisp deployment. That's what I was trying to say. Here I am um, using this uh, four pound fishing line from Walmart. I made loops out of it. And this is a test similar to BESS sharpness test, except I think mine is uh, more accurate. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, um, so what I'm doing, I'm gonna take a few measurements in the random sp spots between this blue tape pieces just to get an idea how sharp, or give my viewers an idea how sharp this knife is from the factory. We'll compare results to the ones I got on my knife back when it was brand new. And uh, I'm gonna say that it's not the sharpest result that I've seen, but it's pretty close. The sharpest I've seen was like 360, 370 grams. And this is running um, um, between four and 500, somewhere in that area. So I'll give you an average in a second here. Um, so uh, potentially one would wish to re-sharpen this knife. Jared uh, had a video about how to sharpen this particular knife because of the recurve. It is not as hard and please don't speculate folks. You don't need a curved uh, stone or plate. Uh, he clearly showed that a regular stone will do a fantastic job sharpening and I've sharpened other knives like that. Haven't sharpened this one yet and um, I have no doubt it's doable. So this knife is on the sharper side of the spectrum. Some knives come at 600 grams or higher. What I'm doing here, another thing that Jared uh, was surprised by is my measurement of the thickness behind the edge or BET, behind the edge thickness. So I came up with a more sort of accurate or sort of repeatable method of doing it. Uh, I'm using a, a clamp from a fixed angle sharpener to set the sort of the plane where my um, calipers will measure. And on the newcomer's knife, I'm getting consistently 13 thousandths of an inch behind the edge thickness. On my knife, it was 16 to 18 thousandths of an inch. Depends on where I measured it, and I will remeasure it using this method here in a second. But this knife is insanely thin behind the edge. Uh, I know there was at least one video that claimed that it's 10 thousandths of an inch. 10 thousandths of an inch is basically the thickness of two human hairs. And uh, I think that's a little bit extreme. So with uh, 13,000 behind the edge, I think it's the thinnest I would actually want my knife to be. So Jared, if you're upset by my measurements, I am sorry. Uh, and again, I'm expressing just my opinion and uh, my opinion is here for entertainment purposes only. So I'm setting up my uh, blade in this device. And while I'm doing it, I'd like to thank everyone who subscribed to my channel. And absolutely special thanks go to the folks who buy Super Thanks. I really appreciate it. It's like a jolt of adrenaline into my creative mind. And uh, I also would like to thank uh, the 15 channel members, I think 14 or 15 channel members that actually uh, signed up to uh, pay a small monthly fee to be members of my channel. All right, so as you can see, um, there's one measurement where I got 15 and I get 18, 16, sort of uh, depends where exactly on this uh, recurve I am. I am removing the blade from the handle now on my viewer's knife because he requested that I test the hardness, which I will do in a minute. But uh, before I do that, I wanted to circle back and double check that the bearings on my knife actually got damaged during my test just a little bit where the balls were not coplanar anymore, probably from the twisting uh, test that I did. These bearings in a brand new knife are perfect. There are no discrepancies in how the balls are located. And um, basically what it tells me is if you're going to torture your knife, you might want to look in the uh, washer replacement here. But other than that, there is nothing wrong with the bearings as they come from the factory. If it's an absolutely first video that you watch on my channel, I would like uh, to let you know that my channel is not affiliated with any knife makers, knife designers, or knife retailers. I keep it that way because I'm trying to stay as independent in my thoughts and unaffiliated, fair and balanced as I humanly could. And some of my tests are specifically designed to take bias out of it checking for flatness in the tang of the blade area. And I think it's flat enough to do the test. I will not be 
testing it to, till cows come home as I tested mine because I want to return it to the owner with minimal permanent markings. Uh, each time I use my uh, Lieb probe on the, the blade, it leaves a tiny little indentation, maybe two microns deep. Uh, try to keep that indentation where it's hidden by the handle. It does not affect the function of the knife. With that said, I will minimize any kind of uh, visual alterations to this knife um, because it's not mine. So uh, if you're interested in supporting my independent channel, I already mentioned uh, Super Things and memberships. Another option, uh, look at the gear in the description that I promote links to on Amazon. Those are not knives. I do not promote knives, but some sharpening and uh, gear and tools. So please take a look. Uh, and if you're in the market for any of that kind of stuff, um, I'd appreciate you using my links. So we're starting the testing on the wrong foot. It's um, way below where I expected. My blade came in between 69, sorry, 59 and a half and 61 and a half uh, consistently. So uh, I think my um, overall was 60.1 was overall average with all the corrections. And this blade is running in basically the same ballpark, but wait for the um, wait for the averages. We will also do a comparison blade or two to see if my lead is out of whack, the tester, which it isn't. I can jump ahead and tell you. Um, so flipping it on the other side, let's see. Um, on my knife, one side of that flat area, the blade's tang was um, concave on one side and convex on the other. So uh, I believe this was the case because when you grind final flatness, uh, just the heat generated by grinding can give a minuscule, minuscule uh, warpage. As you can see, I'm reading a little bit higher, uh, just... I had to go ahead and say that, right? It's an outlier. I will remove all these outliers out of calculations. And when I say outlier, if it's um, more than half an HRC point or six lead points above or below the average, it's an outlier because now it's outside of the tolerance zone. That happens not frequently, but it does. Just to unseed any doubts in your mind, I will validate the calibration of my lead. The nominal hardness of the block that I'm testing it on is 787 leap points. And um, my allowed deviation from that is plus or minus six leap points or 0.42 HRC. And this device is well within this tolerance zone. Let me grab my comparison blade that I've used. Oh, shoot, I forgot to turn the stopwatch on. I usually use the stopwatch to show you that this is uninterrupted segment and not edited, but uh, this time I forgot, and so be it. I'm not redoing it because that knife isn't mine. You just have to take my word for it. Or watch closely to see that there are really no cuts in this segment whatsoever. Anyway, uh, setting it back to HRC, this blade consistently comes between 63.5 to 64.5 on average calculations. I've seen individual strikes to be in excess of 65 HRC. It is also MagniCut, and in case you wonder, this is White River Backpacker Pro, a beautiful blade, and um, one I could highly recommend, but I will not provide a link to it. So as you can see, it's right on the money where I expected it, but I am not stopping here as a surprise to you guys. And in response to numerous comments I received uh, regarding uh, best tech treating Magnica 62 to 64 HRC, a fact that I verified on one of the blades I tested in the past, uh, that was on TACCOM No Name Knife. That's the name of the knife. Uh, came right on 63 and a half. So, just to satisfy myself and my viewers, uh, I purchased this blade. It's a Best Tech. Um, what the hell is it called? It's a Best Tech Swordfish. A beautiful four inch blade or nearly four inch blade. I'm working on a video that will completely deep dive into this blade and uh, score it. But I am testing the hardness of it here. 
for the first time, brand new intact blade. It's the first time I removed it from the handle. Just for our mutual enjoyment, I am going to test it right here for the first time in hopes that uh, the rumors about Best Tech are actually true. Here we go. 63.6 on the first strike, that's promising, but let's not jump to any conclusions and continue testing it. Five strikes on each side, that's what I do. And then the device beeps and calculates the average, that's what we're waiting for here. Um, and there's a little bit of um, gel. This is a incompressible uh, premium sanitizer gel that is made out of pure rubbing alcohol and additions of natural oil extracts. So all these fluids are incompressible. It's Newtonian fluid, as they say in science circles. And I'm ready to switch on the other side. This side was right at 63 HRC, beautiful. So uh, looks like uh, for a hundred bucks, that's what I paid for this knife. Um, I grabbed it on sale. It was the last one my local dealer had. I think they go about 110, 120 or so. And what you're getting is a beautifully um, blended, uh, you know, two-tone handle, D10, making this knife a heck of a value. So on this side, which I think it's slightly convex, uh, I ended up with two outliers and recalculating uh, the average, I'm getting 62.5 HRC for the overall average between both sides of 62.8 HRC. So I have one more unpopular opinion to express, and uh, that is that the performance difference between MagnaCut blade at 60 HRC versus 63 HRC is minuscule. If you look at Larry Thomas's charts, Dr. Larry Thomas compiled very extensive charts of all steels and especially MagnaCut. Uh, they, there you can see that the performance doesn't change much in this hardness zone. Why did the manufacturer who's clearly capable of producing uh, MagnaCut at hardnesses above 62, as I proved twice already, why did they choose to go to 60 plus or minus a half. I have no idea. Ask them if you have any connections. If uh, I had to guess, suppose, or speculate, I think uh, that manufacturing engineers, when they saw how thin that grind is behind the edge and how hollow is the convexity on this, decided that it would be nearly impossible to heat treat it to a higher hardness without promulgating some kind of uh, cracking as the knife gets used and is subject to stresses. That's my guess, supposition, and speculation. I think uh, the designer should have a really long conversation with the manufacturer.